Hey everybody, Charlie here. Welcome to Voxel Tycoon. This is a sneaky little game. I say it's sneaky because somehow flew right under my radar. I have no idea how I missed it. Uh, but special thanks to the Voxel Tycoon team for sending me out a copy of this and being like, hey, I think you missed one. Yeah, you did. I did. I definitely did. So what is Voxel Tycoon? Well, you can see it's in a Voxel type world, right? And um, it's a transportation game. It's been compared to Open TTD, which is uh, Transport, Ty Transport Tycoon Deluxe. Now, I have no experience whatsoever with TTD, so I don't know. Um, but you can probably compare it to like a bunch of different little games uh, that have similar mechanics as this one, uh, but obviously completely different art style. Let's just take a look at it and you can judge it for yourself, but I, I think it's got a lot of good potential. So I'm gonna start a new game. And uh, I'm gonna call my company I Hall Incorporated. That's what I've decided that my company is gonna be called now. Uh, I'm gonna leave all the other stats completely, um, you know, default. I'm not gonna touch anything. Uh, but what I am gonna do is just adjust the world seed here. And I'm not entirely sure what I want for my world seed. So, uh, you know what? How about this? I'm just gonna take my finger, I'm gonna start at A, and I'm gonna drag it across the middle of my keyboard, all right? So just gonna go boom like this. And that's gonna be that's gonna be my uh, my world seed. So if you uh, you want to just do that with me, you'll have the exact same world as I do. How's that sound? Let's go ahead and start. So what is the game? H how does it work? Well, obviously I'm gonna show you and explain it. But uh, think of it like you are in charge of moving stuff. I mean that's the simplest way I can say it. Obtain stuff and move it somewhere else where it's needed. Whether it's raw materials or processing something more advanced, you need to obtain stuff and move it where it's needed. That's that's the that's the game. That's all it is. Yeah, like Transport Fever, right? You may have heard of that. It's kind of the same thing, right? So let's go ahead and uh, I'm just gonna say, welcome to Loveland. Apparently, so all right, we're in Loveland. Uh, it's subarctic biome. Okay, cool. It's nice and cold here, I guess. And uh, we have three cities in our region. Loveland has a population of 180. Ypsilanti, wow. Okay, hitting at my heart here, okay. Michigan, it's a tourist city, so maybe not entirely factually accurate. <laughs> uh, and then we have Searcy. Now, there's three resources that we start the game having access to. There's iron ore, wood, and coal. And these are the three resources that we need to move to certain locations. Let's go ahead and hit got it. I am going to close this tutorial, but I might open it again later if uh, the need arises. So here is our little region. We've got Loveland. Um, we've got wood down here, it looks like. We've got iron over here. Okay. And then where's the other towns? We got Searcy right over here. Okay. And uh, do we have another town anywhere? I thought we had. Where's the Ypsilanti? There it is. Ypsilanti. Okay. So Ypsilanti all the way over here. And they want iron. We have Loveland over here. They want wood and coal. And then we have Searcy over here. And they want wood as well. So three towns three sets of demands. We can click on one of these buildings. These are individual businesses. These are not us. These are other businesses who have demands. They need something so that they can have their business working and they can keep providing jobs. If we satisfy their demands and satisfy what they need, well, then they'll be successful and they might grow. Who knows? The city might grow if it's a successful area of commerce, right? So what we need to do is we need to provide these different resources. Right now we have three resource nodes, coal, wood, and iron ore. We need to get these resources into the hands of the people who need them. That's that's as simple as I can go. We start with $750,000 and that is a loan. So that means we have to repay this. So I'm gonna pause the game. That's gonna get everything real nice and quiet for us. Now, they've made some changes in the most recent version of this game where if you are paused, it actually has a tactical benefit for you because you can now place buildings and lay it all out. There's no blueprint mode or anything like Anno, but you can lay it all out exactly the way you want. And as long as you remain paused and you didn't unpause, you can now deconstruct things for uh, a full refund. So you're gonna, you have, basically you get it back. If you unpause though, 
means you've used the building at least one second. Well, now you're getting a very small portion of your money back. So this allows you to sort of plan things out a little bit more. I like that. Okay, so uh, we are going to start with wood. I think this is probably the best. It's right between Ypsilanti and Loveland. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start here, and I'm going to go through mining facilities. And we have iron ore, coal mine, and sawmill. Well, sawmill goes on wood. And you can see that if it's the right kind of building, it will highlight green for me. So it's pretty easy to tell. Now, this is a voxel-based world. And that means that we have this uh, little steep elevations and stuff. And your cost to produce is impacted by everything on the map. I mean everything. Like if I place a building here, I'll show you an example here. So uh, if I take, this is wood, right? Um, yeah. So this is wood. So you can see that because this is a place that processes wood, the trees aren't having that big of a deal or they're not having that big of an impact on it. But it, it's still, you're going to have to take down that tree and demolish that tree to place this building. So this building is going to cost 37500 or 400 or 300 or whatever, depending on where I place it. The standard price for this is 36500 So placing it right in the middle here is going to cost me 1000 bucks more than it should. Where if I placed it over here, now it's barely more, right? Basically taking out like the little rock right there. And, and that's the only, that's the difference here. So positioning and stuff is actually pretty critical in the beginning if you're going to save money. So uh, for this, since I'm sending the wood that way, I'm going to kind of bias my sawmill to be kind of over on this side of this deposit. But um, I'm going to do it probably right here, actually. This seems like a decent spot. Maybe I can put it on this side. And I'll explain. This actually matters where you not 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 for this building, but um, later on when I place another building, my, my stations, it really matters how you position it. So I'll show you that in a second. So let me just put this right here. And that's going to be where my sawmill is. Now the sawmill is going to mine, I guess. It's a mining facility, but it's going to obtain wood. Uh, at set intervals and it's going to load it up into, into its storage up to 58 units so once it gets to 58 it will stop working until somebody picks up the stuff and moves it and then it will refill it and these things can move really quickly so you can move things really fast next we need a garage or sorry a station so for the station it comes with a road now it's important to note here if you're going to play this game yourself links in the description by the way if you want to learn anything more about that um is that your trucks will not enter the building when they uh, when they use like when they drop things off, right? They don't go into the building. They stop in the road, unload, and then drive. And they will not do uh, U-turns, which means that they're going to be on the right side of the road because they are, uh, you know, properly cultured gentlemen. <laughs> American, you mind US dollars. Um, they're on the right side of the road, which means if they're driving this direction um, and you put your stuff on this side, they're gonna have to do a U-turn somewhere to come back and get this. So I'm gonna place this, I think. Um, I can see the thing is I kinda want this to be an intermediary between there and there. So I'm gonna just flip it over though for now, cause this is a fine spot for it. As long as I place the station close enough to that it will be able to get the resources for it. So uh, the standard price for this is 21,500. I'm paying extra because I got that elevation issue. But if I go right about like here, that's not that big of a change. Let's just put it like this. One more in. All right, that's gonna be my station for the, the wood. Now I need to connect this stuff all up here, right? So let's close these windows and we're gonna make some roads. Now roads are incredibly expensive. Like, there's so, so much money in the early game is going to be made on roads. But here's the tip, right? If you change elevation, it's going to cost you a lot more if you're going to go over top of it. So you can clearly see the elevation because of all this voxel stuff. So we can, right, we can change, for example, even if I go through uh, trees and stuff, that affects it too. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to try to try to stay on this. Well, if I come down like there then I can stay on the same elevation and get to here pretty easily. So how about I come right in? Ah, but where's this road going? Is it going to keep going that way? Yeah, maybe it, maybe it will. And there's a lot of terrain to go over. That's expensive, $62,500. Um, but if I went around and didn't change elevations, it would probably be significantly cheaper. So I'm going to say, how about we go... 
uh, let's start. Let's actually stay up here for a bit. And uh, I want to kind of go about like this. It's a whole different game when there's no music playing. Oh my god. Uh, yep, like this, and then down. All right, that's going to connect this up. And uh, then I can have this road continue on and go around the mountain and get to here. Because um, we're going to want to connect that because we're getting wood. We want to send it to CRC too. So um, let's start on this side, I guess. And we're going to just take this road. And I think we can probably go around. Let's go around. Let's go... Um, Meh. I mean, a more direct route would be faster, but it might cost just a tad bit more to produce that. Like that's 30,000 bucks right there, you know? But it's kind of, it's not that much more expensive. It's its actually pretty mild, this one step here. It's, it's pretty mild in terms of extra cost. How about we, is it this level? Yeah, right there. Okay, how about we, we we'll go here. Say, hey, drop down right here. Then we'll come over, come over like this. And we'll just kind of zigzag in. No, that's gonna. Well, we can probably do it like this. No, no, eh, like that. Okay, so we got ourselves a little bit of a zigzaggy road, but it does get where we need it to go, and we're connected to CRC now. All right, the the next thing I need is stations at each of my towns, because your trucks will only stop at stations. They do not stop at the resource producer. So. We're going to need a station here. And same thing applies for the resource producer. These businesses need to be in range of the station in order to be able to get it. And here's another little pro tip, at least I've picked up anyway while playing around with this thing, is, you know, because your people, right, because your trucks, I mean, they, uh, they only drop things off on the right side of the road, so they have to do a U-turn. If you put your stuff off the main road, right, and then you create sort of this, this circle for them, to go to instead of being at the end of the road you'll basically get it to where you don't have as many people waiting in line and it's a nice smoother flow so i'm going to try to keep people at least when they're dropping stuff off keep them doing right hand turns so uh this is in the middle of the city and i like this so i'm going to keep this up on this elevation right about here this also means that if any other businesses pop up later and they might uh, they can pop up as the city expands and need something. And if they're already in range of the station, then I'm good to go. I don't need to make another station. So I'm going to put this here. And then see, now they're going to turn right into the station. But the station's on this side of the road. And that's not good, right? So I kind of messed that up. Uh-oh. Well, I'm paused still. So let's get the full refund for that. Because I didn't actually unpause it yet. And I can change the station to be here instead. And now we can go like this. Okay, so this is now on this side of the road. And now we're going to take a right-hand turn into the station. Beautiful. And I want to give them a way to get out pretty easily. So we're going to also make our way over and do that. And now they can just go whoop and around they go, right? Uh, I don't really care necessarily. I suppose I should probably make another way to go this way too, right? Because it's a little easier for them to get out. So if I wanted to, I suppose I could have done this instead. Yeah, I probably should do that instead, right? So let's get a refund here and here. Let's see, unpause. And then we're just gonna go like this instead. So we're kind of changing our minds, but it's for the better, right? There. So now they can make right-hand turns, drop it off and continue on and then make a left there. Okay, that's gonna be that station. We need one more station and that's over here. And we have uh, these two businesses now. Can I position this in a way where it can be seen by, like where it can interact with both? I don't know if I can. So the trick here that I find is that it's 21,000 to place one station. But if you want to place one station in a position where it can get both of these, right? I need to place it like right here. Well, it's 60,000 to place it there. It's going to cost me more than double what a single station cost anyway. So I'm better off placing two stations for each one of these sources. And I'm going to do that. So I'm going to place this station. I think kind of, um, hmm, I need to make it this a way for people to get around. But I think uh, ideally I could place it right next to it, honestly. But if I did it right here, then I'm kind of, yeah, I, I want I want to be in range for people when they expand. Maybe we'll start with this one. They're going to turn right on this road and then they'll end up right here. That's pretty good for that station. And then I want one more station over here. And I think I might do it over on this side. 
because it's in range of that. Um, I'm, I'm concerned about it. You know, maybe they come down here with they're gonna they're gonna run this way, and then they're gonna have to turn around. I, I think if they're gonna come from this side anyway, I might as, they might as well come right into here like this. So I, I think I'll place this station just in the back side of this business. We're gonna place it like right here next to this business if I can get if I can get away with this. Okay, now let's hook this up. For this road comes around, hooks up there, and then this road. Can you do this? Oh, I don't think it can. I don't think I can. This is why we have our. This is why we have it paused, right? Uh huh. Go like this. And now nah, you can't quite do that. Okay, so let's get rid of this. I need to give a little bit more space between this and that station. So we'll move this station, and we're gonna bring it right about here instead, I guess. Right about. Mm, yeah, I think I'll put it right here instead. This gives me a little bit more room. Let's hook this side up first. Uh, you see, now, because of this, it's actually difficult to line. You have to line that up perfectly, don't you? All right. I'm going to line this up perfectly. And uh, I guess they'll just call it a day. I might as well go right next to it, I suppose. But then, I'm, I'm again, there's going to be spots where this doesn't cover and this doesn't cover. So I'll need a third station if I go on this side. So it does make more sense just to put it in here, doesn't it? It's just more expensive. My gosh. This, this is a... Uh, it's, it's solving a logistical issue that's not really an issue. Just place the damn building. <laughs> okay, there's that. All right, and then uh, we're going to go like this and here and then like that. Okay, we're just going to call that good. If I need another station, then fine, whatever. I'll make another station. All right, so that gives me three stations that cost me 60000 to place collectively, all three stations, instead of placing one in a very strategic spot for both of them and having it cost 60000 for just that one station. So we saved a little bit of money there. Now, we've also got this way. But before we get on to that, I'd like to let the game run and uh, make some money. So the last piece of the puzzle we need is a garage. And this garage is going to spawn build. It's going to spawn trucks, basically. So uh, I am going to... When I spawn the truck, it's going to have to come out of the garage and it's going to turn out of, from out of the garage. So I'm going to have this actually be right about here. And then I'm going to have this connect like that. That way it can turn either direction instead of being like locked to a specific direction. So now it can come out of here and do its thing. Okay, so the first thing that we want to do is we want to buy trucks, right? And we have resources like this wood. We're going to go ahead and let the game run. That also locks in my purchases. See that little plume of smoke that just happened? Locks in my purchases, which means I'm going to start losing money. Now, this money indicator down here is only the budget including construction so it is not indicative of me actually losing this much money we're not in deficit this is not a deficit right this is purely a reflection of money flow so uh now what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna buy a truck and i'm gonna buy a couple of trucks actually we're gonna buy a truck that has the ability to haul wood and in this case it can haul five wood uh per trip or five wood at a time at a speed of 50 kilometers an hour all right, so we're gonna buy this for about 30,000 30, bucks. I'm actually gonna buy a whole bunch of them. So we're gonna buy, let's say, what's the current demand? Okay, that's big. And that's even bigger, wow. Okay, we're gonna buy, uh, let's say six trucks purely for wood transport. All right, so here's how this works. We're gonna click a truck and we are going to add a stop. First place we want you to go is to here. And this is to pick up the wood. We're gonna load all available cargo. Then I want you to take that cargo over to this station where it can be delivered to this for the wood, right? So we'll put it there and that's your whole chain. That's all I want you to do, go. Truck pops out, turns right, cause that's its first stop. And it's gonna go over there to get that stuff. Now. Right now, this truck is going to come here and get the wood. It's then gonna need to turn around. And luckily for us at the moment, turning around is easy because this is already a dead end. So he'll just turn whip a Yui. But if I want this road to connect over here, and I do, then he would have to go all the way into Ypsilanti to turn around and come back the way he wants to go, which is actually pretty realistic for Ypsilanti. <laughs> uh, 
only Michigan people will understand this. All right, so let's go to a car. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna configure all of these. So we're gonna go here, load it, and then we're going to add a stop and go here, unload it, hit go, let it go. Okay, and I'm gonna do this one more time, the exact same path uh, for the exact same customer. And hit stop and unload and okay go. All right, same things all happening. Now I'm trying to stagger them a little bit so they're not right next to each other because these guys will have to compete for time and I want them to turn around and go. I don't want them to ever have to wait for each other. So I'm just waiting a little bit there. Now the next car, we want to also add a stop. And again, I'm trying to stagger it with the other cars. We're gonna load here and then we're gonna come over here and we want you to, to drop this off at this depot because it has this wood in range, right? All right, go ahead. And uh, I didn't race. Uh, I didn't pay attention to staggering it because now we have two trucks. What I was trying to avoid is this. Trucks come in, and now they have to wait one at a time. It's not that big of a deal, but if you're having a line of trucks waiting, then it's very inefficient. And then you might want a second station or something. I don't want to do that, so I'm trying to stagger them out. Let's add another stop to here. Load this up and ship it to here. Unload it and hit OK, and this looks like a good time. Go ahead and release. All right, one last truck for wood, and then we're gonna set up the other pr production chains. And the only reason I started with wood is not because it's the most uh, profitable or anything. It's because there's two. there was two towns that want it. Every other resource, it's a single town that wants it. So um, I just started with one where I had more customers, basically. All right, good. Last thing here, let's add a stop load it up and then we're going to add another stop here and unload it and this seems like it's spaced out enough go all right so that's it we are profitable with this setup we don't actually have to do anything i can let this run and i will make money at least to a certain point because over time these places are going to grow and mold and if you don't satisfy their needs, businesses will go out of business. So there may no longer be a coal need here if I don't provide it, right? They're creating jobs. And if there's no way to make money, you can't create jobs. So um, I'm going to do something really interesting here. Maybe it's not that interesting, but I'm going to do it anyway. I need to provide a way for these guys to turn around because I'm going to take this road all the way across, right? So let's pause it really quick. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this. And I'm going to have this road come all the way over here, and then I'm going to have it come this way and just meet up with this. Oh, I went too far. Luckily, we paused so I can just get my money back because roads are expensive. Let's bring it from this side, actually, all the way over here. And, uh, you know, like, that's pretty like I'm raising the terrain this entire time. That's a really dumb thing to do. Hmm. All right, let's bring this out just a little bit. We're going to bring you down from here instead. And then I just need to hook you up. And again, this the roads not lining up. It sucks. I really want to be able to do micro movements with these roads. Um, because if you can't do micro mo movements with the roads, then that's what happens a lot. Um, we will not have that problem, um, fittingly enough, when we go to uh, have railroads. Uh, train tracks and stuff we don't get that problem with, with that so I'm just gonna let this be elevated I guess whatever it's fine and we're gonna connect that up there okay so this road is now connected but because of that when these trucks load up their supply they're not gonna whip a Yui here they now need to go all the way to Ypsilanti to turn around to their destination that's bad so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna allow them to turn right from here Just that little road. And that's gonna make a huge difference because now they can whip a UE right there and off they go. Oh yeah. Meanwhile, this guy's just now returning going, man, dude, I don't ever wanna go back there again. <laughs> okay, next, uh, let's set up the other production chains. So we've got iron ore over here and these guys want iron. And we have coal over here and these guys want coal. Of course, that's the, like, why couldn't it just be iron in here, right? Let's start with coal. So I want to drop a mining facility here. And this is for coal mine. And I'm going to go as close to the town as I can. 
There we go. 44,000. That's exactly to cost. I'm not using, not spending anything extra for that. Now, can I put the station raised up a little bit? Is that possible? Doesn't, uh, nope. This is here, stations. Well, yes and no, but mostly no. <laughs> Yeah, if I want them to get, so if I want them to get the coal, they have to come this way. So I want the station to be on this side, kind of, yeah. So we'll just go, I want to line this up though. Yeah, so it'll be about here, fine. And then let's uh, drop the road in there. Okay, so this is all set up. But we need a station in Ypsilanti, so while we're here, we're just gonna go ahead and, uh, now this is an opportunity. So this road's already heading this way and it can meet up here. So what I could do is put the station right here for what at cost, I don't have to tear anything down, that's cool. And the cool part is, is I also get this road, which can wrap to here now, and now they have that circle where they can just go, right? They don't have to worry about turning around. So that's better, all right? So let's hook up this, uh, this route with some trucks. We're gonna buy a couple of trucks. These ones can haul coal. So we're gonna buy a couple of these trucks. I'm gonna say three for now, it's pretty good uh, for meeting the demand, which is 125, okay? Like we're never gonna be able to meet that with just three trucks. So um, you, wanna, you wanna be careful on this too. Um, you might be asking, why not just pile this in? Well, you, ideally we wanna get this to excellent, right? And that's when things are going to start growing in this town. However, if you oversupply the business needs, your prices start to drop. As supply is exceeding demand, the price of the product goes down, and that's gonna be universal throughout every product in the game. So, we don't wanna oversupply. That said though, three trucks is not gonna oversupply, so let's add a stop, get the coal from here, load it up, I want you to take it to this station, unload it, go. Then I wanna do the same thing, for a lot of these other ones. Now, one thing I wish the game had, would be very nice, is, uh, maybe it does, and I just haven't seen it yet. Um, to be honest, I haven't really looked at it because I'm just now thinking about it. Um, but one thing I wish the game had would be a copy-paste function. If I had one truck that already had a route, I'd like to be able to copy, I think this is a garage. Oh my, never mind, it's right there. Did I just did I just see it? This one. Oh. Nope, that's not how it works. <laughs> well, we bought an extra truck. That's all right, we're gonna use that one for iron, I guess. Uh, I wanted to be able to copy the route, okay? Not the truck, I just bought a free, bought an extra truck. Okay, let's pick this uh, car stop. We're gonna go here, load it, come over here, unload it here and unload and go. Now I'm seeing an opportunity here, right? They drop the stuff off here, but then they have to turn around and go all the way back like this. I don't like that. So we're gonna hook this road. Mm. I'd like to hook it up right there, to be honest. And I just go like this and then like that, yeah. So now when they drop it off, they don't have to turn around and go around this way. They can just continue like that. It's a little bit more of a smoother experience, I think. Yeah, and they also get to their destination quicker, so that's nice. All right. So the last part of this production chain, and now that we are profitable, I wanna let this clock run. You might be thinking, how are you profitable? I still see red. Well, again, this is total expenses. I keep buying things. So if I take a look at my actual cash flow, though, I'm doing pretty good. My new vehicles, remove this expense. Construction, remove that expense. All we're left with now is vehicle running costs and building maintenance. And that's about, what, $3,800 right now? So I'm 3,800 is my expenses, but I have this much in trade. So I'm definitely profitable right now. The other thing we can do, and I'm not really ready to do this yet because it's a permanent thing, is we can drop our headquarters. So if you click this button, it's flashing in my face over here, you can build a headquarters near any settlement you want. But pros and cons to this, the prices are gonna be increased in that settlement. You can you get a you get a price bump, and that's great. Um, so we can sell things for higher prices. However, you can only build one headquarters and you can't move it later. So 
feel like I want to see which city is going to be flourishing and developing faster. I predict it's probably Loveland, but my actions in the future may change that. So we'll see. I'm going to hold off on building the HQ right now. But what I really should build, though, is a lab. So a lab is going to let us access the tech tree. And that tech tree is not that extensive, but it's very important. And there's lots of different categories. So we have manufacturing, gasoline engines, mining, rails, roads, steam engines, storages, and just additional research capabilities. And laboratory stuff is very expensive. Who would have thought R&D is expensive? And it is. The first one we want to go down, though, is manufacturing. Because eventually, these guys are going to have more sophisticated demands, like having wanting planks, for example, or wooden beams. And I'm going to have to be able to make those things using the wood that I'm already accessing. And that's where we get sort of like a factorial thing involved, right? Manufacturing with conveyor belts and splitters and all sorts of things, right? So we, we want to be able to, to utilize these things. And in order to do that, I need a lab. So I've got $119,000. And I would actually like to get the rest of this production chain set up first so that these guys don't get antsy and lose business and stuff. So um, before we get into the lab, I am going to set this up. So iron mine. We're going to bring this. Uh, we're going to try to keep it on the same elevation here. So let's put the iron mine like this. It's 52,000. And then we're going to put the station on this side of the road. It, it doesn't really matter, but... Um, they're going to turn around anyway, so we'll put it right here. Actually, if I do this, then they can wait in line behind. Yeah, yeah, let's do this. Now they can, if they're waiting in line, they're going to be waiting in line on a long road as opposed to like cramming in the back here. So, uh, so let's take and make the road. And I still don't understand their decision by the devs treat roads differently than railways um, and you'll see that later on if we get it when we get into trains we absolutely will be getting into trains um, but trains are very expensive so we're not going to get into them right away it really won't be necessary to get into trains and invest in that until we have really high demands or we unlock new territories now there's other territories like you can see here um, hang on just a second because the clock is running and I'm not profitable with iron yet so the first thing I want to do is I want to get a couple more trucks. Let's get an iron truck here. I can only buy one more and then I'm out of money. So these two trucks are going to have to do uh, to do for the uh, the iron right now. So for your first route, wait, you already have a route. Wait, what is this? What's up with this? Oh, part 10. Oh, right. I copied the route, of course. Um, okay, we want to edit this route then. Get rid of it. So when you copy the truck like that, I had never done that before. Copy the truck like that, it also copies its route. All right. So basically, if I want... Ah, uh, so if I wanted a, both of these to have the same route, I should have just configured this one and then did a copy function and bought a truck with the exact same route. That's how I can do it. Okay, fair enough. Um, so I'm going to add a stop. We're going to go here to get the iron. Then we're going to go ahead and switch over to here and drop it off. And that's your route. Go. Not the same thing with this one. Add a stop to here. And then go ahead and unload over here. And I'm going to wait just a little bit. This is probably long enough. Go. All right. Now that I'm profitable with iron, I can technically just let the, the game run and it will make me money. Which is what we need because I really need to get to uh, manufacturing and stuff too. But I wanted to take a quick second and just show you the map and stuff. So... This is obviously not the limitations of what we're going to be able to ship to, right? We're not just going to be dealing with these three cities the whole time. No. There's a lot more. Like, a lot more. As far as the eye can see. <laughs> There's a lot of cities, right? A lot of land to cover. And a lot of biomes and stuff too, right? Yeah, hot ones, cold ones swampy ones you got wa water in places to navigate around uh, higher hills this one doesn't have the highest of hills i've seen ones with taller mountains and stuff but this one's the map seed for this i guess is uh fairly mild relatively flat actually it's nice it's not gonna cost us as much to, to get on with it 
But these other regions are locked to us right now. So all these different regions to get access to them and the supply of materials that they have available to them. So there's iron over here, wood over here. Um, there is, it won't let me move the camera unless I'm, yeah, here we go. Copper in this area, that's a new resource, right? These guys over here, they right now have a demand for stone. To find stone. Um, these guys right here, they already want wooden beams. Okay. So there's a lot of different things. There's sand over here too. And we just have to be able to take those raw resources and turn them into real products and, um, ship them out. The demand here is actually excellent. So this means that when this industrial building wants to produce, it doesn't have to wait for a supply. That's a really important thing. Uh, this is saying it's not profitable because it hasn't made money for me in the last 30 days. That's because it's been sitting in my garage this entire time. So it will eventually make me money. If I take a look at the fleet menu, just down here, you can see each individual vehicle and what it's working on. Also the costs that you have involved in that vehicle, um, the running operating costs for that vehicle uh, overall. And this is just gonna keep going. Um, this is a rolling 30 day period. If I switch to lifetime, you can see this is again, the, the daily maintenance cost for the vehicle, not the purchase price. So right away, you can see that pretty much every vehicle, car one and two, especially, they've made me a lot of money, right? And over time, this one right here will too. Now the demand has shifted. This, the demand for iron has been reduced. I guess they're not having very good business right now. So they are not going to order as much iron, but I'm already not supplying them up to their peak demand. So it doesn't really affect me at the moment, but I have almost $56,000. So what I should be doing is buying additional vehicles for iron. So let me take a look really quick and just use that copy function. Cause that seems pretty good. So you're doing coal, you're doing iron car 11. So I think what I'm going to do here is I'm going to copy car 11. I'm going to do that twice. Oh my God, that is actually much faster. <laughs> All right. All right, GG. <laughs> it does have a, it does have it. I, I noticed it now. So we can increase. Now I know they just said that their demand is slower. So why send more trucks that way? And yeah, I just did that. So instead what I can do, since this truck is empty right now, I could, if I want to, and I, uh, the problem I don't, the thing I don't like about this is that if I shut the car off, it is literally ogling the engine. It will stay right there and cars will not pass other cars. So that means the car behind this is going to get stuck here. That's not good. Um, I can use that later to my advantage with trains and stuff too. But what you can, what you can do though, is if I eliminate its route, then what it could do is it's just going to wander around, I think. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch this route to be coal instead. Cause I don't need that many cars on iron. If it's, if it's being reduced, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch its route to being coal. And I want you to bring it over here and it will just go ahead and do it now. Okay, good. So that's the introduction to Voxel Tycoon. We're making some decent money, but I still need to get, uh, I need to get a few more trucks just to help facilitate demand, but I really need to get a lab set up so that I can research for manufacturing for wood because we are going to get somebody in here is going to want wooden beams or planks pretty soon. And it's probably going to be somebody in Loveland because this is the place where we are doing more business and therefore it can thrive and grow a little bit faster. And now that I have an extra truck on coal, there's a good chance. Well, that's interesting. Yeah. These guys are also going to have to wait when they get picked up here too. It might be better to have a bypass route here. Actually, I think it is. I'm going to have a bypass route right here. So if they want to just drive straight through, they absolutely can. But if they need the wood, then they're going to have to continue on. This is better. I like this. And then they can also turn around really quick here instead of occupying this road even further. So I, I like that better. It's a little bit of extra cost, but I think it's going to make things flow smoother through Loveland South. All right, good. And we're meeting good demand now. And as they get over it, they'll start putting things in storage too. Okay, so if you want to see more Voxel Tycoon, please let me know. 
down in the comments. Let me know how you like the game, and uh, maybe we'll play some more of it. But uh, this has been more of a let's try for you. Um, I like to do this sometimes. I'll play different games. You guys see that all the time, I think. Uh, we'll play different games, just like one video or whatever. Non-committal, but if it does really well and you guys really like it, then I'll look at that and I'll say, hey, that's a clue. You should probably continue that. And so there you go. So thanks for watching. We'll uh, hopefully see you next time. Bye-bye.